E. All right. So uh, last time we talked, we stopped here. Uh, we said that mm, you fire an Ajax core. Okay. Ajax Ajax uh, core is usually called X H R. Uh, except for HTTP request. Once you fire it, you send it to the asynchronous. Then it will wait for the callback to come. Okay. So the callback once the events got triggered. Uh, the event is called the ready state change. Okay, and this is the old one. Later on, I will tell you there's a new type of API. Okay, there's old API we call it the HHR 1.0. Okay, then we have HHR 2.0, which is nowadays uh, standard. So it's 1.0 standard uh, using ready state change. If you cannot remember what is ready state, this is the ready state. Okay, the ready state change. 0, 1, 2, and 3, and then at the end you will have a ready state change equal to 4. So whenever this number change, you will fire uh, ready state change events, okay? So when the events come, so every time you will check whether the ready state change, yeah, I know that it's changed, but whether the current value is 4 or not. If it's not 4, I I don't process, okay? So if it's 4, good. Then I will process it, let's say, a check whether the recent status is 4, 4, 4, 3, or others, but uh, I'm interested in 20, uh, 200. So where is 200 okay? Then give me the response test, okay? But uh, last time we already talked about this. This sucks, okay? Uh, sucks in the sense that you can see it here. Okay. Okay, this our core. All right. Uh, we have the wrong HTML, okay? Yeah, colorful. Huh? I love this. So what what happened to to this page, okay? So uh, suppose that uh, I will load some of the things, okay? And unfinished loading, I will put the content as uh, h1 inside h1 tag, okay? So where can you find I put it inside h1 tag? Yeah, here is this. So it's what I want, okay? I want to read the URL, and then when the URL just uh, finish return something to me, I will return the test and put it here. So that means that when I call this document.write uh, supposed to be working, you should see some message. But this time it's become undefined. Okay? It's uh, just very straightforward that that means that the function itself don't return anything. But why the function don't return anything? Oops. Let's take a look uh, here. Uh, wider code, okay. So the code become wider, it is easier to see it, okay. So you will see this functions will return something, but you know this is just a uh, how can I explain this? Uh, in C you don't have uh, something like this. Basically, this function is a setup, okay. So once you set up, it will return at this point, and this won't be blocked here, okay. So if you want this to be blocked here, either you use a synchronous call or you use the a new type of uh, JavaScript writing, we call it promise, okay? So the ask uh, this function, yeah, you promise me and you will return. I will wait for your return. Once you return, I will retrieve the results from that promise uh, pattern, okay? So, but it's not promise, it's not uh, something synchronous, it's just a setup of a state change function callback. So when it return, it will return nothing. So, the proper way to write it, usually the proper way to write it is to use uh, DOM manipulations that uh, I will process the DOM tree, add a new component. Let's say I find it is an H1 tag, okay? So I find out uh, that I have to create a H1 tag. Inside H1 tag, I use a test node, or you love to use in the HTML, that's up to you. So use the HTML to set this string. The string is from the request response test, okay? Then it is the proper way. So that's why the JSP though every every time is complained to me. Okay? And you can try, you can try copy my code here and put in a uh, uh, JSP though. JSP don't always complain about hey, uh, please don't use uh, document dot write. First of all, document dot write is anti-pattern. Anti pattern means that this is not a good pattern. Okay, so please remove it as well as uh, my function is just wrong, okay? So if I'm going to implement this new type of support. Yeah, let's say you say how, how they are, how are you. So it becomes something like this. I won't write the uh, uh, content there, 
Okay, I just uh, asked JavaScript, hey, run this function, and this function will set up a new tag, and I have just append it to the body, okay, and then I have an h1 tag. So this is the basics. Do you want me to try anything? Okay. So if you don't want me to try anything awful, okay, then I will go ahead to talk about some other features. Okay, so this is a function design. I will skip it. Other features like, uh, uh, let's say, uh, in a previous lecture we talked about form extension, right? So actually you can fire automatic form building. Yeah, let's say that you are writing an agent's call, okay, I don't know, you write an extension, uh, working in your browser silently as a background page, and every time you find that you cannot go into, uh, let's say, go to Google, okay, then you suspect that, oh yeah, I need to log in, okay, then you can craft, we craft, craft a form request, okay, the form request, then you get a form, and after that you want to call doc submit, okay, but actually, you don't need to call the form doc submit, you just do a little bit reverse engineering, yeah. You know that the form is called a particular CGI program, PHP page, uh, or some program. It requires this input, login equal to TY wall and password equal to so set. Let's say it's something like this. You can crop it, write it here, okay, and choose to be the post method, okay. Of course, the URL will be the URL going to the login program, not the form. We don't load the form now, okay. Let's say we are going to, uh, uh, I, I forgot to capture it, okay? I should capture the page uh, or the ELG wave login form, okay? So uh, if you can see the form actually and you can know how to crop it, then when you crop it, you add a header here. So it's called form URL and code, okay? Then crop this input and this time the request of send, you have to send the content as a part of the request then you can automatically log in. So this is one way to write your, let's say you want to write some auto login uh, from extension, this one way. Another way is just uh, uh, use dog manipulation, fill in the form and call dog submit by yourself. Both works, okay? But here is even lot more low level. You have to do some reverse engineering over the script itself. Okay, so you can try it here. Uh, let's say it's my uh, login.php. So this is my login.php. Uh, my my login program is it's like this. Okay, just a PHP program. I, I, don't, I usually love to write PHP program because PHP is so much like C. Uh, yeah, just like writing C code. So I just check uh, whether pass login is still on, password is so sad, it's successful, then then go ahead, okay? And I hard code it, I want the post method, okay? If it's not post method, I won't go on. Okay, then uh, what is my login uh, program? My login program is so simple. Just the previous functions, okay? I hard code everything, okay? In case that if your input contains space, your input contains uh, illegal characters like uh, your password, it's not so sad, but uh, uh, some exclamation mark, some... Uh, Evil side, even, and then you have to do one more thing. It's called a URL. URL encode. Okay. Yeah, uh, encode URL. I can there. Hey, I always forgot the name. Okay. I, I always copy and paste my code can play. Okay? Oh, I need this. Okay. Yeah, actually, this computer is a string. Okay. We just encode it. I can try. No problem. Uh, encode URL I component. So let's try it. Uh, it's easy to try. Just open up. The console, okay, and inside the console you can call this function. It's supposed to documents, documents dot. Is it? No. Where is it? Window. Ah, okay. It's uh, it's belong to Windows. Okay. So you just enter uh, wood. Okay. So I just uh, write a set of symbols there and ask us to encode. Eh? What? Oh, I forgot to close it. <laughs> okay. So uh, part of the things that is illegal characters that should happen as a form of your, uh, let's say the parameter, then you will encode it. Just like exclamation mark, you don't encode it, but others will encode it by yourself. You don't have to do it by yourself. Huh? Uh, that's why in assignment one, actually, we are 
cheating you guys. <laughs> in a certain way, if it allowed you to use JavaScript, okay, for the client side, then before you say anything, uh, like the, the, what is that, the annotation text, okay, you find the annotation has some problem, yeah, go through and call your LI component and produce a new string and send it back to the server. Uh, Python can do the decode thing and everything's cool, everything's fine, you don't have to do any extra things. Okay, so this is, yeah, so you use it? All right, so uh, then we can go, go on. Uh, this is just a page design that uh, use ages as a login procedure. Uh, it's, it's getting more and more common, okay? We are not using, a, I, I consider that, I don't know how to, how to describe that, that keyword in English, okay? Using the old ways, in Cantonese, okay? Uh, how can I describe it in English? Out of date, not just out of date, just about the style problem, okay? Yeah, many people use this kind of uh, login. You just fire an agent's call there, and the agents return me that, ah, oh, successfully log in, okay? Then I will just use the DOM manipulations to change it into login success. Of course, you can change change it to your, your favorite loading GIF, okay? I see many loading GIF, okay? Uh, even some power language, okay? I don't know why. Yeah, then, uh, yeah, this is page design. I will go, I will skip it because page design is a, uh, Supposed to be a uh, easy stuff, okay? You just uh, use uh, just the class, the CSS style to change it, okay? Then we will go to one more interesting stuff. So what is that? And uh, you can actually use Wireshark to see this feature, okay? I don't, I don't have Wireshark here. I don't know why the, the Mac Wireshark really sucks, okay? If you use Wireshark, you have to use Windows. So what I'm doing, I'm uh, just put something on a I have done so. Put something in a, a CSC iPhone 40 account inside the CGIB and do something. And when I load it, it gives me a, some response that I never think of. It gives me such a response. Anybody heard of it? Uh, how many of this is taking 4430 now? Then your assignment 2 is doing this, right? For uh, how many of it didn't? Or well, didn't take it before? This, uh, I mean, uh, before me, said several years ago, maybe, okay? Yeah, so what is that? Uh, for 4430, guys, you already know it. Because it means uh, your browser is doing something interesting, but inside the Wireshark report, the Wireshark is a capturing program, huh? tell me that your ages call, your fire ages call, is just a simple get, get method call, it gives me back not 200. Now, how about the ages? Will the ages tell me that, hey, I, I go for the SHR something, and when this age change, help me be 04 instead of 200. Mm. Okay? So, uh, what is a free, uh, 304? 304 is actually on your client, on your client side. On your client side, is, uh, yeah, I, I hi highlight this part, screen capture only, okay? To tell you the design of the HHR, HHR design, okay? So it's beautiful like this. For this type of response, okay? What it's doing is give you a trait, okay? The, of a user agent generate conditional request must ask as if the server give a 200 okay. So what is the meaning? I go for the wild shot capture, I know that the server keep, give me something, and the server return code is 304. Your user agent, that means your uh, browser, should pretend that it's not 304, but 200, okay, 200. So in case that you want to debug, okay, later on, maybe, I, maybe you uh, go to work, okay, uh, you want to debug, and you find that everyone says 304, 304 means that uh, you send a first request to the server, and uh, Request give you a response, and the last modified time, I love to use that last modified time to check something. <laughs> Do you know what, what is this? You don't know what is this, okay. No problem, huh? Um, should, I, should I record this? Okay. Um, give me one site you think that it's old enough in CHK. Huh? Kills is not old enough. 
give me at least something you think there is a way. Hmm? Oh, right, right, right. Right, good, good, good. That is not old enough. I and ye. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Is it the fresh or not? Let me check. <laughs> wow. Okay, so let me check this component. Uh, ah, this component is wow. You said, tell me more than. Okay, let me still mean the code. Okay. Yeah, the front front page style layout. Yeah. When you using front page. <laughs> yeah, I know that. Okay. I do so in 1996. Okay. I do that in 1996. Three layers of tables. Okay. Yeah, 1996. I'm already doing that. Okay. Okay. So let's let's take a look at the leverage traffic. Ah. Huh? So I will show all the leverage traffic. Yeah. They are beautiful because they use Faker, okay? They use Faker to compose the page. Okay, so load it. Yeah, that guy received money, okay? It's not about mood or not, okay? So let, let me take a look at uh, this request. So what is the, these are the requests that fire by the browser, okay? So suppose this page is a static page. So then every component, just like JS file, the GIF, okay, they should be uh, see, they return me field field four, okay. Let's take a look at some interesting stuff. The GIF itself, okay, the GIF itself, something like this. I think it's very old. Let's see the headers. The response header. Ah, yeah, it's not. Ah yeah, I should do the following. Okay, no problem. Mm. Shift below, you say. Shift below. Okay, then should be better. Okay, uh, we response header. I don't believe that. I don't believe someone updated. Someone has updated the logo. We'll do it. Okay, maybe let's find some, some other figures. Uh, ah. Okay. Uh. Okay, I think this figure no one will update it, okay? <laughs> Header. E? Oh, I know, I know, I know why, I know why. They migrate everything. Copy the files to a new sample server. Oh. Uh, that, that server is maybe running since 2003. Now how come you don't move, move it? Okay. Let's let's think of some even older things. Uh, any older old, old stuff that you encounter? Ah, uh, I, I I know one place. Okay. I just should I record this? I think I should not record this, but yeah, let's go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I need to use VPN. <laughs> oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> no, I tell you, I tell you. That color CSC title, <laughs> that figure is used while wow, I was on the <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let's take a look. Huh? Yeah, they're environmental friendly, okay? I, I don't know whether they have. No, 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 it's not about survey, it's about copy actions. I don't think that someone will copy this page. Okay, so uh, let's take a look. Huh? We shift below, shift below, shift below. Okay, shift below later on and tell me what it is. Uh, hmm? 
preview. This one, do you think this one is old enough? No. no. Um, ah, this one must be old enough. Ah. <laughs> Will you still use this? Okay. Yes. Yes. Yes, it's our expectation. I made it from 1998. Year 2000. Last modified. Yeah, we are going to look at the history of the Okay. Uh, so now you are, you are trying to investigate. Hey, why I know how to find out some really old stuff? Because this last modified time is uh, the modified time inside the file system. Okay. So you go to the Apache, Apache requested file, and it will read the uh, metadata of the file. So the file modification time on the server will be down here. Okay, so it's direct, directly read right there. Okay, yeah, I, I actually, I, I don't think that uh, March 20, huh? I think that this should have something older. <laughs> Let's check, uh, yes, yes. That, that, that banner, right? Where is the banner? Ray trace? No. Cost? Inspect Inspect element, okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, here! A front, no. Hey. Inspect element. Inspect element. Uh, it's called title.gif. Title okay. Title. Can you find title? Ah, uh, I find title HTML. No. Ah, uh, here. This guy. Hmm. You still think that you, you will use something changing color? Ayya! It's still. It's even. Even three more reason. <laughs> more reason than the mailbox icon. <laughs> it's 2000 December. Uh, who. Ah, uh, I know why, I know why. Uh, usually we will, we will do some copying before the term start. Okay? <laughs> Yeah, this is this is a term two course, okay? So, ah, uh, yeah, that that is history, yeah. Uh, sixteen years, okay, of of untouched, okay. It's still serving you after sixteen years. Okay, so back to here. So that means that uh, here this time is not generated by the uh, script, okay? Let's say you have some script. Actually, it's about the t Unix timestamp on the server, and it's just down the server, uh, the timestamp here. Uh, of course, you can use uh, your script to modify it. Let's say in PHP, PHP has a header call, has a function. You can set this time to whatever time you want, okay? But I don't think that the, the graphics course is uh, using that, okay? They are really the real timestamp, okay? So this is the last modified time, and to save bandwidth uh, in the old days, really at the year 2000, okay, still a significant amount of people still using Mongo, okay. Really, I, I still have a, a modem line in my home during that time, but I already upgraded to uh, I cable, okay. Yeah, I cable is very hard to cut up. Yeah, I, I can only cut it up 10 years, okay. So then that's why you send a request to the queue. The server will tell you that, hmm, please uh, give me also your modification time of that request. If modify since header will be added to your get request. So the get request sent there and find that, oh, your last modification time is this day. I will tell you 304. Okay? Mm. Now let's imagine that you don't want this to happen. Every time you don't want the server to test whether. Uh, my version is more recent than your version. Okay, so what should you do? Let's say you cannot control the server. You can control your client. So the the reason is very simple, right? Just don't add this header there. Okay, every get request, don't put this header there. Then you won't have this problem. Now let's take a look back to my uh, my browser here. Okay. So the with Quest Hester, header, this is the first version. So it's a 200. Uh, okay, we why is no 200 here? Okay, it's 404 watts. 
Uh, let's focus at the um, maybe choose just one one thing. Mm, maybe this is the basic doc CSS. Okay, basic the CSS. Uh, we it, but here don't have the last modified time. Uh, maybe ray trace. Okay, now ray trace has the last modified time. Okay, to year two thousand. Okay, so now I we load the page and let's take a look at the ray trace stop chip again. We load. Okay, so the ray trace. Now this time the status code is for three oh four. Okay, and the response will not echo the figure to you. Now why is do so? Because in my in my request header. Uh, I have this guy, okay, in, in this uh, request. So what can I do in order to let the browser don't add this here? Okay, it's very simple. Shift below. Okay. Let's try uh, Shift below. Yeah, I press below. Shift below. Okay. Then go back to find out the ray trace again. So the ray trace don't have the if modify since header. Now, so you will get 200 OK. So this is the way that, uh, one of the way I should say, is one of the way to don't let the browser to ask for, hey, do you have any update? If you don't have update, I don't, I don't need what the things that you send me. Okay? So there is a way to enable it. Okay, in case that you are using browser, you should be low. But how about uh, if you are using Ages Call? <laughs> that is one of the way. Can you see what is this? Yeah, you produce an Ages Call. You set request dot set request header. <laughs> if modify scenes, you know what is that? New and then add a Unix timestamp there. New days zero. So that means that ah oh, my copy is what 1970. Okay, I don't do it in uh, iOS. I don't know what will happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you laugh because you, you know what it is. I will expect spark it on by high geo I don't mean your manager that much. Good idea. Yeah, iOS 9.3 it has a bug. We do know. Uh, if, if you change some of the time, I don't know which part, okay? They just tell tell us that oh there is a time field, okay? Then you can set many n times. If you set to this time, your iPhone will break. Okay? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I have a less of five, okay? But uh, yeah, I don't know whether you have any problems, by the way. Uh, you can try, okay? I have an iPhone, don't use mine, okay? Use yours. And here, you know, uh, every time the server will think that his version is more recent than yours, so it will fire something new to you, okay? This is method number one, okay? We have actually two methods. So there's a reference about this method, okay? One of, uh, this is the cache control diagram in the client side. I will skip it because I want to talk about another method. Okay, another method is realized in jQuery. Okay, jQuery. I don't know whether you have uh, used it before, but if you have used it, you will know that ah, put down an object, access some fields here, and when you look at the jQuery documentation, there is a, a properties called cache. What is cache? No one, no one will tell you, right? Now I tell you one of this. Cash, set it to false or true means something. So let's take a look at my course homepage. Uh, where's my course homepage? Okay, course homepage is here. And okay, so again, it's looking at the network. Now I don't, I don't press shift below. I just press below. Below. So you feel very few, uh, you find very few 304. Usually the 304 is not by my script, okay? It's by, let's say the analytics.js. It's by the Google Analytics. Uh, I guess this 304 is from jQA. Okay, jQA want to know some of my, uh, the theme or the, the CSS style, so it will use 304. But others, 
let's say the there is a JSON file called config. Okay, this is my my program inside the uh, course homepage. Config.json will be 200. And what is that thing after config.json? Okay. So you can see there is a long string here. Uh, question mark underscore equal blah 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 blah. Okay. So you know what is question mark, right? Question mark means that whenever you use a assignment one, you already know it. Huh? Uh, you start to treat this as a CGI call and pass the argument. But this is just a simple file called JSON. The config of JSON. So what I have done in my program, uh, in my course page, I use a jQuery. Okay, and I set one flag is cache equal to false. So that means that don't ever try to cache anything on my browser. So how to avoid the browser cache anything? Now let's take a look at the strategy that a browser will cache things. Okay. So what is the strategy? Of course, is check whether there's a cache object there. So what is the meaning of has a cache object? They use URL. Every browser uses URL as the key. I suppose URL is unique. Okay. So if a URL things, uh, you, 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 I don't know hash table or whatever things, things that uh, there's no such cache object, then craft that HTTP request. Uh, if there is an archive there, okay, then it will depends on some of the control. We call it the cache control, whether you send the request out or not, or you add the if modify syntax there or not. Now, how to fake the browser is very simple is every time you fire a URL out with a unique URL. That's it. Then every time it's unique, then it think that, ah, oh, when I use a unique key, can I find a cache object in the browser? It will say no, because every URL is unique. And jQuery is doing this by a very simple trick. Put every URL at the end and pair this string. Question mark underscore equal to a random number. Totally random. Then every time the URL will be different. Let's see again. So uh, someone help me to remember the number, okay? <laughs> for one four six zero zero blah 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 blah, and then the last one is uh, six zero one, okay? Below. Again, I want to look up the conflict of Jason. Yeah, it's supposed to be different. I remember the last few numbers. Uh, contain a six, contain a one, okay? Yeah, there's a. I don't know whether it's unique or not, but why it's always one, four, six. Is it unit timestamp? Seems to be a. Uh. Is it unit timestamp? Let's try. Let's try what will happen if I put it there. No. It's a Unix timestamp. So many. Yeah, I forget about it. Huh? <laughs> yeah, maybe a millisecond, okay? It's really so, yeah, that is how JQA helped you to not to. Uh, low end cache object. So what what are the things that I would suggest you to use this? Maybe configuration, configuration file. In I I write my course homepage page like this, you see, OS course course home page is the same as four four and four zero, right? Actually I build a just like just like writing a template, okay, template style and no different JSON file, no different template file, then it will become a new course home page. Okay. So this is how I write it. So every time I'm very concerned about whether I've updated the configuration JSON. So I will put this string here and say cache is no. Then every time I read the latest version, not latest, maybe a, a fresh version, I should say. Fresh, everything is a fresh, not a cache version. Okay? So uh, if you are using the old style, okay, the XXR old style will be using this sign of call. If you're using level two, okay, then you will change from the already state change to thought or no, okay? So this is a uh, level two uh, specification, okay? Uh, for others, uh, you can take a look, uh, respond test, state test, and you can retrieve all the things out, okay? Uh, 
Coaster we have covered, so I will go ahead a bit. Then uh, we go to the part that I want to talk about. We call it a method invocation pattern. Okay, how to invoke functions. Uh, I remember that start a few. Okay, uh, before a few of uh, things that maybe you have missed, so I will repeat it in a faster manner. So let's say uh, I want to write the functions that uh, fire multiple edges call at one time. Okay, at one time. I don't care whether you are firing parallel or series. Okay, and you know what series is one after one after one. Okay, or whether it's a firing two URL call at the same time. What I'm asking for is just like I set up a uh, engine that fire multiple call. If all calls come back. Okay, call this callback function to tell me that yeah, all requests have finished. Okay, let's say it's something like this. Let's say that you are uh, writing writing an app. Okay, an app is a uh, uh, something that you never heard of. It's a mental search engine. Mental search engine is a, a fire request to Google, fire to Bing, uh, fire to Yahoo. Okay, then we ship all the requests back, and you display the things three different search engine results in a in the browser, okay? But it's not, not useful anymore, you know? Uh, Yahoo search engine result, where does it from? You don't know? Thanks. It's from Google and Bing, and, okay? Why I say and? Because Bing, there is a, there's a scandal. You never heard of a Bing scandal? Maybe I'm, I'm too old. <laughs> okay, Bing, Google, scandal. Yeah. <laughs> Do, do you know what a scandal? Chao man, okay. So there is a title that's saying that Bing is cheating. So what is that? Uh, there is a case that uh, Bing is uh, just just created, and Google find that they have some incorrect search results, okay. And that incorrect search results also appear in Bing. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you know that that is how you survive in the university, right? You copy assignment, don't copy something wrong. Okay, here Spain is doing that. Spain is copying something wrong, and Google find it out, and Google say that Spain is cheating. Oh, so that's why I always say Spain sucks. Okay, it's, uh, of course nowadays they they already uh, not not uh, really copying, maybe their friend, okay, just like Yahoo, Yahoo is a hybrid of uh, Bing and Google, okay, yeah, you know, because Bing is using Google without, so Yahoo is Bing and Google, okay, but uh, yeah, it's not, not, not the uh, focus here, my focus is, I find a free call there, now how can I integrate the free calls and display to you, I actually need one callback functions to control all three results. So uh, what I needed is, uh, yeah, actually my design want to be uh, flexible, just like writing printf. You know, printf your format string, and then you can uh, ask for several inputs, uh, percent, percent d, uh, free percent d, then you will add free. Uh, argument there. I also want to do it. I want to, want to call this multi ages. Uh, sometimes it's two inputs and then one callback. Sometimes it's three input, one callback. Okay. So how can you control it? Basically, you can uh, use one items called arguments array inside the functions. The functions will tell you something interesting. Uh, I will use VS Fit to demonstrate now. Oh, where's my useful browser? Oh, here. JS Fiddle. Hey, come on. All right. So uh, let's write a function. Function call he he. Okay. And when you write a function, actually you don't need the uh, unless you are seeing the prototype with inputs. Here I don't write any inputs to the prototype. Okay. Uh, then what sh what are you going to do? Uh, alert arguments dot length, okay? Or even uh, not doing that, you can just for loop print it out, okay? But I don't want multiple alert, so I just do this. Now I call he he and a one 
uh, force. Okay, I fire three different inputs. Okay, and run it. What can you say? It says three. Okay, let's change it in just one input. Okay, run one. Okay, so it's very flexible. You don't need any input pra parameter. Okay, you can create your own parameter inside there. Okay, how many of you are clicking through the Excel now? Okay, pro. <laughs> shift, 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 shift. Oh, I cannot shift that. I, I, I don't know how many, how many inputs, right? But uh, pro don't have the argument array. Okay? But I don't know, that's cool. Huh? So uh, every time I use this concept to write pro, I shift and push. Push it in the array, shift and push it in the array, okay? And if I cannot shift, then I create this array. Yeah. Then every every pro function call will become very easy to run. Okay? Alright, yeah, so, so my cost is zero. Okay, <laughs> forget about it. So here I want to fire uh, parallel ages. Of course, uh, ages call contain callback function. Okay, so maybe I have to correct the codes with correct code structure setup. Okay, and maybe it's don't need it. Okay, but uh, I just put error names here. Then you can on that, take a look at the code. Then after this, I will collect all the uh, intermediate ages call and its results based on its code structure. And after I collect the complete set, then I will call one thing, call the callback call. Okay, but the callback function call I have some design problem. Okay, so what is design problem? It's just like here. The callback function call has to uh, put some input there, right? Let's say that I have a key key, I have a three arguments. Okay, uh, some sometimes people give me uh, and other functions which is only one arguments. Okay, so I cannot control how many things I have to put it here. I can only control how I call it, right? But in in the previous case, I hard code it, right? One, yeah, one, two, three, okay. And then if it's set three, and then another call, one, two. Now the problem is, let's say I know that uh, someone tell me that to call he he with three inputs. Someone call me to do it. Then actually you can use if then else, right? If ah someone tell me to call this version, then I call this version. Else I call this version. Well, what happens if your variety is not something that you can control? Actually, um, you have to compute it in the file. Then you may have if then else, if then else level, or let's say ten different levels of if then else. So we are not doing this method. We are using another thing called apply. Okay, so what is that? Let's run. Hey, did I write anything wrong? Ah, I, uh, sorry, I missed the disk. Okay, yeah, I missed the disk. Uh, now. Ah, okay. Run. Ah, good. So it's no, it's free. Then I can change it to Two, okay, run, and then two. So what is this? Uh, let me do some annoying, annoying alerts. Okay, I will do the following. Uh, for y equal to zero, smaller than arguments dot length. Okay, and and uh, sorry, Mr. I. You hey, don't want to help me, huh? I plus plus. Okay. Then alert them one by one. Arguments I. Okay. So what will happen? Maybe I change it here so that you can see more clearly. Okay, good. So let's run. Then the first one is one. The second one is two. Maybe I change it into something mo more. Let's say I put hello world. And then one more uh, window sounds. Okay. Yeah, let's run it. 
Then this one is hollow, well, and the window sucks. Okay? So this is one very powerful way. You cannot find it in C, right? C, you uh, cannot invent different versions of the same function call name, but with different inputs, number of input arguments. We allow you to do this, okay? You will set up a he he call. Okay, so it's not not he he he, okay? The function is called he he. You apply it, and then now later on I will tell you what it is, okay? So, that's this. Now, I want to integrate everything now. I want to integrate everything. Uh, my ages call callback functions, okay, is ready for you to call using a pipe pattern. Now, how to write this program? Okay, so uh, I already tell you about this. So, uh, my design is like this. You find all the ages call, every ages call all done, call that callback, and this is my plan. Okay, and how to successfully write this plan? Uh, inside per ages call, okay, I will set up the XHR objects, okay, set up a culture for the uh, callback. Maybe you can call party and then use culture, it's not a problem. And then I'm set up, fire it, okay, and after I fire it, okay, I will go ahead, okay, yeah, I don't have the code, sorry. Uh, let me just show you the code. Go where you okay here. So multiple people ages JS call okay, or the parallel download no problem okay. Show you the one column version. Okay, so what I'm asking is hey, I want to call my ages call this my uh, functions okay. Right now. 1.txt, 2.txt, I want to get these three items, okay? And when this three items finish download, I call the major callback call, and the major callback call is doing something like this. I know that I will receive three results, okay? You give me the three results, and what you should do, you should just write down result one, result two, result three in the script, okay? So maybe you can change it into another form, but yeah, that is the design. Now, how I Design the code here. Okay, the code is a big trunk of things. Okay, really big trunk. Okay, so what I'm going to do is on every every register change. Okay, I have a handle JS call. Okay, the handle JS call is something like this. Okay, I just highlighted to you. Maybe you don't need to take a look at the content. Okay, so it's a function return a function. Okay, and every time I will set up this closure of this function, you can use bind. I don't use bind here. I just have a the input argument here using the name by by the time we call it and bind it to the arguments. Okay. And there is a functions here to check whether all the status, all the functions called per finish. Actually, uh, my design is very simple. My design is, uh, where is, no pen here. Oh, okay. My design is very simple. I just set up an array. Set up an array. I know that I have three different call, uh, all set to false. If one is finished, one is finished, I will change this array into true. Okay, another one is finished, sends to true, another one finished and sends to true. Okay, so the status all true is just in all the items together. After the end, results tell me that, oh, it's all true. Then I will call the callback using the apply pattern. Okay? Yeah, that is it. That's it. So, what is the apply now here? I didn't explain to you, right? The now is actually just like by call, okay? The by call you can control to this. Here is the place that you can control to this. If you put, put a now there, that means that you're not interested in controlling this. Now let's say I change this into document. Okay, then what will happen? Can you guess what will happen if I execute this code? Can I still see the alert? 
Okay? Okay? Okay, no problem. But how about I change this in the this dot alert? Is any alert function inside documents? There's no alert function inside documents, so what will happen? Yeah, nothing, right? When I run it, it said nothing. But if I change it into a window, oh yeah. it works again. Okay? So that means that this is controlling the disk, but uh, if it's for apply, you seldom do this. So they seldom change this, okay? Unless you know that this apply is to, it ha something happened inside the events call, and the events call, the disk change in the event objects. So you want to control something inside the event handling thing. Then you will call this with a new uh, disk association. Okay, so this is apply pattern. Okay, and apply pattern is actually using a lot in JQuery. Okay, you, you know JQuery whenever you handle something, this is correct. Okay, the this object is correct. So either they are using apply or they use the find function call to fix the this. Okay, so I think that's the end for the leftover of uh, part two. Any questions?